In this video, I want to address the question, what if I have multiple audiences for my offering? Should I address all my audiences or should I address one? And what if I have different offerings? Should I offer all of them or should I offer them one at a time? So let me address first whether you should offer one thing at a time or offer multiple things to multiple audiences. And then I'll address, well, how do you choose which one to offer, okay? So first of all, uh, scattered efforts are usually less effective. You are typically more effective when you focus because when you focus, you will be tapping into your subconscious mind and of course your conscious mind to gather all the ideas for how you can best serve one particular audience, giving them one particular thing. It is very tempting uh, and I see this with entrepreneurs all the time. And there's a famous phrase called entrepreneurial ADD, right? It may, may, may or may not be actual ADD, but it's this um, characteristic of business owners to try many different things very quickly. And the reason why is because they encounter a bit of a difficulty. They try offering something that isn't well-liked right away and so they think well guys let me just jump to the next thing uh, or they see another idea and that gets them excited so they, they move in that direction and I will encourage you to try to stay with one audience offering one thing long enough I would say at least three months of concerted effort real uh, focused activities before you switch okay and um, you know uh, the there's a uh, there's a well-known saying that you can do everything you want in life just not all at once and I think that applies very well here you can serve multiple audiences in the lifetime of your business but not all at once because if you talk with I'm just gonna make up a couple of very different demographics let's say you talk with um, urban black women with kids as one audience that you could help all right and then another audience is rural uh, white uh, let's say the urban black women with kids are maybe in their 30s and then the rural white single male who, who is in their 60s okay your solution supposedly can can help both of these people right very different people with very different issues because they're in very different environments and their lifestyles are very different. The demands on their life are quite different and maybe even the direction of their life is very different right now. So do you see how challenging it would be to try to address both of those audiences at the same time? Uh, where it's if you focus on one audience, you can really get to understand what the context of their life is and how your solution fits in to their particular context. And so therefore your marketing messages are going to be far more effective. So please, I encourage you, do your best to focus on one audience, giving them one offering at a time. Um, this will make your marketing better because you'll be addressing their specific issues, okay? So how do you then choose among the various audiences and among the various offerings? Let me give you four factors, uh, four questions to consider as you choose which audience to focus on at a time. And as I mentioned before, you can focus on one audience for three months of concerted effort. And if, if it really doesn't work out, then you can go to the next audience for three months, focus their marketing on them. It's okay. Really, it's okay. Um, you know, one, one fear, of course, is, well, George, people are gonna think I'm a flake. I, well, actually, people will think you're more of a flake if you, if you try to address all audiences. Oh, I can help anyone with anything, or I can help all audiences with this. Address one audience first, and then move on to the next audience, move on to the next audience. Don't worry about what others are thinking. Only concern yourself with what each audience is thinking about your offering. That's what matters most to building a true livelihood, a, a, uh, a viable business. Okay, so how do you choose? among the various audiences. Number one, which audience has more income or savings at this time? Okay, choose if you have 
you know, different audiences, uh, if, if they, if you have that choice, right? Choose the one that has a good paying job or good paying business, or they have significant savings that they are willing to spend, okay? And the question is, well, how do you, how do you know? Well, you need to talk with them, or you need to talk with people who know them and kind of get a sense of, hey, do you, you know, have you ever thought about spending money in this area, you know, et cetera, okay? So the second factor is, for which audience is your offering a painkiller rather than a vitamin? Okay, what I mean is people are much more willing to buy a service or a product that is going to relieve them of suffering now instead of thinking five, ten years into the future and preventing some problem at that time. You need to come to terms with the reality of human nature. We are working with human beings and the way that we've evolved at this time is we think short term, unfortunately, but that's the case. And we need to meet human beings, well, as a human being, you need to meet other human beings where they're at. You know, chances are you also, uh, as a human being, you probably think short term when you're buying products and services. You might not even know that because marketing is so clever that they will talk about your short term needs uh, and you just buy it without even thinking that that's what they're doing. Um, and I'm not saying that all we should focus on is short term, but if you focus on their short term pain, you will then be able to work with them on the longer prevention of additional problems or the long, the reaching the longer term goals. Um, it's not, so again, symptom relief is how we should frame our offering, okay? And then address the people for whom they have this, a painful symptom right now. So choose that, choose that audience. It's not that we can't sell vitamins or preventative measures but it's, it'll take a lot, you know, you gotta be big, much bigger company, a lot bigger budget, you know, and distribution to sell vitamins or preventative measures. But as a solopreneur, as a small business, if you can choose, choose to sell, uh, at least frame your marketing first in terms of s relieving people's suffering, helping them relieve them from their pain. Um, you know, even if you can address you know, they're paying first. You can work with them as you, as you, as you get to work with them. You'll work 10% on their pain, for example, and then you get to work 90% on their root causes and more long-term issues, more transformational issues, right? Okay, um, but again, start with their pain. And the other reason is that when they are in pain, okay, and let's say that you have lots of, competition lots of other alternative offerings in the market to what they could they could buy not just yours but many other people well if you are presented in front of them I mean if they're seeing your message right now and they need to relieve their suffering relieve their pain they're going to choose you they're not gonna have time they're not gonna think let me take the time to research a bunch of other alternatives do you, do you see why it's more effective for the viability of your business to frame the marketing initially around relieving the, the symptoms of their pain, okay? So choose that as your audience and as your offering. Not that, again, not that we're trying to make them hurt more, that's not the idea. The idea is that we come to them as a compassionate presence. We diagnose, oh, is, is this what you're feeling? It is, okay, well, this is exactly what I love helping people relieve, does that make sense? And then you can go into the more transformational aspects of your offering, longer term thinking, etc. Okay, third factor is that uh, choose the audience that isn't feeling served well by other offerings in the market. They're not being served as well as they would like to be served. Um, so, for example, uh, there are, you know, I'm a, I'm a marketing coach, business coach, and there are tens of thousands of other business and marketing coaches out there, right? So why would people choose me? Well, I have framed my offering and I'm speaking to an audience who is really uh, tired of 
um, marketing that is pressure driven, that is fear driven, that's greed driven, that's very pushy and aggressive. And I know they don't like that because I've talked with many of them, uh, many of my audience members, and, and they want something that I happen to love offering, which is a more compassionate stance on business and a more honest way of marketing uh, with, a, with more higher spirituality. And, you know, that's so. What about you? Um, wh your audience, uh, what are they not satisfied with in terms of the offerings? Uh, from from similar providers like you, uh, I mean, when one way to find out this is an interesting way is to use Google. Go to Google.com and search "I dislike," and then put in your category of service, uh, and then you will find many web pages about people who dislike this because of this or that reason. So, for example, in Google, I would type in "I dislike business coaching" or "I dislike marketing coaching." And then I'll have I'll find lots of people complaining about maybe marketing is pushy or aggressive or business coaches aren't telling the truth or you know all kinds. So so try that and see um, uh, try that with your various audiences in terms of if you're thinking of different offerings or different audiences, try that with the different things you're thinking about on Google and see um, what uh, where there's more emotional charge for people, and then offer that to those people. Okay, offer the solution to those people. Um, then the final factor is of these different audiences and of these different offerings, which one do you feel the most energy and confidence for? Okay, so uh, which offering do you feel the most confident uh, to offer? And which audience do you feel the most energy and happiness and excitement to serve? So take these four factors, think about them, rank your various audiences and offerings in terms of these four, and I'd love to know what you end up selecting. So if you, uh, if you would like, please comment uh, on this video and let me know. And of course, I'm always open to your questions as well.